Hello everyone and welcome back to the Goomba Grows YouTube channel where today we're going to be showing you guys how to harvest and dehydrate your mushrooms so that you can store them for long term use. These next few clips are going to show you guys the growth over a two week period. It is also to note that it took exactly one week, seven days to see pins after we transferred our bin into fruiting conditions. Okay, and this next clip is 12 hours after the last one, and I'll be showing you that there is absolutely no stopping the side pins no matter what you do. You can use a liner, you can paint the bottom black. Um, you're almost always gonna have side pins. It's just something you kinda have to deal with. They're really not as big of a problem as some people might make it out to be, but uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys that. Something else I wanted to know is that it might feel like absolutely forever to see your first few pins form once you've transferred into fruiting conditions. But after those pins start to get big, it could be just a matter of a couple of days before they are ready to harvest. Here you can see it took about three to four days before their veil has torn and they were ready to harvest. Okay, it is approximately two to four hours after the last clip was taken and you guys can see a couple more of the mushrooms caps have started to open up and more to, uh, veils have torn. None of them have really dropped spores except that big one on the right there and take note of him because in the future we're going to be using him for a spore print and a clone. And the fact that they have not dropped spores yet is a good thing. When mushrooms start to drop their spores, they tend to be telling the mycelium that they have completed their life cycle and they no longer need to produce mushrooms. So if you can get them before they drop their spores, you're more likely to have a better second and third flush. And I won't be doing anything too special here. I'm gonna use the pull and twist method to harvest most of the mushrooms. You can use a scalpel if any of them seem to be giving you trouble. I prefer not to as it tends to leave the base of the mushroom stuck in the substrate and you could have problems with that rotting in the future and causing contamination while you're trying to get your second and third flush. I'm gonna go ahead and speed up this footage because it is like 13 minutes of me just sitting here picking mushrooms so once something interesting happens I will be back. Okay, and I'm actually gonna leave these ones in here for another 12 to 24 hours. They aren't fully ready yet, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw this lid back on and put it back into fruiting conditions. Okay, and this is what we pulled from the first half of the first flush. You guys can see the purple spores on the top of the caps there. They look really cool. And I pulled this one aside for the cloning video that's coming up. Uh, I pulled it aside because it was the first pin as well as the biggest mushroom in the first flush. 
Okay, and for the next step, we're just gonna cut the bottom of the substrate off from the mushroom. And uh, these ones in particular seem to be kind of a pain in my ass, honestly, especially compared to the second flush. They were, they came off much easier from the substrate, but you don't really want to eat that considering there's like shit in it. Um, but yeah, so we're just gonna cut that off and when I'm done, I'll see you guys again. Okay, so it is actually just eight hours after the last couple clips, and you guys can see that most of the mushrooms, their cap is starting to open up, the veil has torn, and they are ready to be harvested. Okay, and it is worth noting that all of your mushrooms are going to be done in a similar time frame, especially when it comes to the flushes. So for your first flush, like you guys saw, I just harvested those all in the same day, some in the morning and then the other ones at night. With that being said, once you think most of your mushrooms are ready to harvest, that means you should take off all of your mushrooms. So all these little mushrooms that you guys see on the surface, I made the mistake of leaving them on there, thinking that I was going to get away with heavy misting to have them continue growing. But that is not the case, they turned out to be aborts, and it was just delaying my second flush. Perfect. Okay, in all honesty, I probably did not even need to add this clip in here since you guys have seen plenty of mushroom picking, but I did add it because some of these mushrooms are absolutely massive and I had to show you them. I mean, look at this donger right here. Absolutely insane. Boom, check out this side pin. He's a grower and he's a shower and he's pretty massive for a side pin. So you can't always hate side pins. Look at this massive mushroom. This is by far the biggest mushroom I've grown. When I weighed it out wet, it didn't even fit on my scale, but I think it was around like 
34 grams, 35 grams wet. And when I weighed it out dry, it was about 4.1 grams in one mushroom. So that's pretty epic. But yeah, I honestly wish I cloned that mushroom over the other one I cloned, which was the first pin of the harvest. It was also what I thought to be the biggest mushroom at the time. Uh, that's clearly not the case anymore. But you guys will see that in the upcoming how to spore print and how to clone a mushroom video. It should be out in a couple of days here. Anyways, I'm going to finish picking the rest of these mushrooms and then I'm going to redunk the cake for my third harvest. Okay, and moving on to how to dehydrate your mushrooms. So, you want to dehydrate them for long-term use. You guys may know that your mushrooms are only going to last a few days in the fridge, maybe five days, maybe a week. Um, but when you dry them out, you can store them for a year, two years, maybe even longer. So, what I like to do is I take my air fryer, by the way, it's not a dehydrator, but it does have a dehydrate mode. So I just go ahead and use that. Um, and I bring it all the way down to 100 degrees for 8 hours. But I recorded this pre-learning my mistake, which was that some of the bigger mushrooms on the second flush actually didn't dehydrate all the way 8 hours at 100 degrees. So I turned it up to 110 Fahrenheit for 9.5 hours, and that was good for all the mushrooms. But I'm sure it's going to vary depending on what type of dehydrator slash air fryer you have. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.